What's up everyone, this is Justin from Make Supply and this video is a build along tutorial for the acrylic uh, basic tote bag template set. Uh, once the PDF version is available, that will be a completely different video. So uh, this one is just for the acrylic template set or if you have your own tote bag design that you just wanna follow along and uh, check out the different steps. Okay, here is the finished bag. All right, let's get started. Um, just a heads up, there are a couple um, weird breakpoints in this video where my battery died. I'm gonna have that fixed for the next video, but all the important steps are covered. And uh, let's start with inventory. Okay, let's do inventory for the tote bag project. I'm going to discuss the tools first, and then I will come back and do the leather and template and go over that in more detail. Uh, as usual, I try to do these projects with um, basic tools and as little as possible. So let's get started. Um, first, I'll have a 48-inch ruler, long ruler, short ruler, 18-inch ruler, just a generic um, box cutter for cutting the leather. Um, contact cement, a rotary punch for punching my holes for handles, a wing divider for marking my stitching line, some uh, Saiwa um, diamond stitching chisels for marking my holes, some 0.35 natural um, waxed main thread, scratch all for marking holes and um, tracing the pattern onto the leather. For my handles, I'm gonna be setting, these are brass rivets and a rivet setter. You can stitch the handles or use other kinds of rivets. This is what I'm gonna use. A couple um, binder clips for holding the glued pieces down. I gotta find a couple more of these. Some various grit sandpapers if I need them. And over here is a marble slab and a 48 ounce dead blow mallet for punching my holes. Okay, so I'm, I'm not gonna be doing any edge burnishing in this project, so all of my edge burnishing tools are not present. But you can do them in your project if you want. So now I will clear this off and bring up the leather in the template. All right, let's uh, look at the leather and the template. First, I'll bring out the leather. I'm gonna be using two different kinds for this, one for the body and one for the strap. For the body, I'm gonna be using this, um, this is called, just called Waxy Italian Veg Tan from um, Badalassi Carlo Tannery in Italy. I'll also link to all this stuff in the blog post if you wanna try, try it out. This is about four and a half to five ounces. It's a little bit on the um, thin side for what I would do for this project, but I don't plan on heavy using heavy use for this tote bag, so it'll be fine for this. So it's a nice uh, textured leather, looks great. And for the straps, this is a eight ounce um, uh, standard like saddle skirting um, shoulder. I believe. I got it a couple of years ago. I forget exactly what it is, but uh, it's a nice, thick, dark brown leather. Great for uh, handles. So that's what I'll be using for the handles. And the template. So this is the acrylic template that this project is based off of. Um, I'm going to be doing one for the PDF version. It's going to be a little bit different, so it'll be a completely separate video. But this video is for the uh, basic tote bag template or the custom acrylic tote, uh, tote bag template that is available on our website or Etsy store. As you can see, it is only one half of a tote bag. Um, it just makes it easier to ship it and to store it in your workshop. But uh, we will be making a full tote bag out of it. Um, this one comes with a one inch strap. Uh, if you choose custom, you can choose your own 
size strap, but uh, on the corresponding uh, template parts, you have some holes going down evenly spaced from the sides and the middle. And this is where your strap will line up. So all these holes that are marked on the center here, you can use these for rivet holes or just for marking also correspond on the uh, template body here. There's an etched center line marked here and here, which will be good for when you're using it to trace in a couple steps. And that's that. Um, so let's show you how this will work. Oh yeah, I forgot one tool in inventory. Strap cutter, very important. So this is how this, is, this, this template works here. You're gonna put it, we're gonna put it down like this, somewhere on your leather. You're gonna trace around the sides, not the bottom. Don't trace the bottom. You're gonna trace, 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 mark your stitching, uh, mark whatever uh, holes you want for your handles. And then when we're done, you're gonna keep hold it in place. Ideally it won't move and then flip it and do the same thing on this side. It's, the, it's a mirror image. And then again, you're not gonna trace the bottom. We're gonna trace the sides and the top and mark your same stitching holes. And you pull the template off and you've got a full tote bag size. Okay, so I am going to set that up now and we'll get started. Okay, let's uh, trace this template onto the leather here. It's a, it's a pretty big project, so I'm trying to keep as much in the frame as possible, but if I go out a little bit, uh, my apologies. Okay, so um, the first step is to decide how much of a strap you're going to do. I'm gonna do a very shallow strap, something like that. Um, but uh, the other project, let me see if I can find it real quick. Here's the other tote I did. You can see I did a very uh, deep strap there with some stitching, looks really nice. But for this one, I'm just gonna do a very shallow strap. Okay, so I decided to mark my tip at the fourth hole there. So what I'm, I'm just gonna put a small mark on each side. Let me line this up here. I'm trying to not waste as much leather as possible. Something like that. Because I know that that hole, that little mark is gonna be the tip. of my strap, and then I'm going to mark the first hole and the third hole, because that's where I'm going to put rivets. Okay. And you can use these side holes, I would mark very lightly, just as like a barrier to where the outsides of your strap will be. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and trace around without tracing the bottom here. The only thing that you can, that I will do is I will come in about an eighth of an inch or so onto the bottom, just as a, a guide for when I flip it over and I can line it, can, I can butt it up against that line. Um, it's gonna be tucked into the seam anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So let's do that. I'm just going to go, it's a little notch, about an eighth of an inch. Same thing on this side. Okay, 
So now you have two options. You can try to keep this straight and flip it over or you can pick it up and turn it. Either way, you're gonna have to line it back up. Just like that. So now you wanna butt it back up against those lines and try to make this nice and even. It also helps if you have something like a nice long ruler, you can uh, line up. Something like that. All right, and once you're satisfied that that's nice and straight, Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, mark the same hole you had. I had one, three, and a small mark on four. And then go ahead and trace. Okay, and as you can see, hopefully on the camera, um, you have a full size tote bag design um, from a hat tote bag. All right, so our next step will be to cut this out. Move this off to the side here. I don't have a mat that's long enough to cut this whole thing, so I'm going to do this in uh, sections here. I like to do all the um, all the all in one direction first, and then come back and do the other. You don't have to do it that way. I just find it easier to keep all my lines out here.
Okay, got one side. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the bigger. You can always freehand these. Um, I like to, with tote bags, even if it's off a little bit, it's kind of annoying, so I try to keep all my lines straight as possible, even if it takes an extra couple minutes. All right, so my battery died out as I was finishing that last video clip, so I'm gonna try to speed this along. Of course, I didn't bring another battery, amateur hour around here. Um, so here's the complete body cut out. And now we will do the straps. Okay, so take whatever leather you're gonna use for your straps. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna use this uh, thicker, um, saddle skirting or whatever it is and bring it up on the table. Sorry about the sun glare, it should go away pretty soon. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is put a nice straight edge wherever on your strap uh, leather that you're using and I'm going to cut about a 36 inch long strap. Uh, I think it's a good number to start with, and if you need it to be shorter, then you can always just cut it down. But I think 36 inches is a good um, starting point. Uh, like, I'm, like I said before, I'm going to be using this strap cutter here. 
I'm going to set it to an inch. Okay, so whatever your strap is, set your strap cutter, or you can just use a ruler if you don't have a strap cutter. And then line it up, pull your straps. This is very difficult to keep in one spot on the camera. Alright, one strap. Hope my video didn't cut out yet. Check on it. Okay, one strap. And for the second one. Okay, cut both of our straps out. So now, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna cut mine to 36 inches. First, I'm just gonna lob off the corners, uh, the ends. Put a nice straight edge on there. Marking out 36 inches. Same thing as I did on the other side, I'm just gonna lob off the straight edge here.
Okay, so now we have two even length straps for a tote. And now you can decide uh, what end you want to use. I'm going to use the English point, or you can just use a square end, it doesn't matter. So next we will uh, trace the uh, English point onto the strap. All right. So I'm going to trace the English point onto the end here. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off. Try to keep this in the video. It's hard to do this from the overhead view. All right, so went ahead and made the English points on both my straps. I'm going to clean them up with sanding. Um, if you're going to be uh, edge burnishing and all that good stuff, you'd want to go ahead and do that now. Bevel your edges, burnish them. I'm not going to do it for this demo, but this is the step to do that. Okay, so our next step will be to uh, line up our straps 
onto our bodies on each side and attach them. I'm going to use the rivets, but um, if you are going to stitch them, then that's fine. You can do that. So, you know, this will look something like this. Okay. So first I'm going to just move this out of the way for a second and find my strap end template and put it back down and mark the holes that I originally designated. So that would be roughly right about there and there. Those are the holes I'm going to mark through for my riveting. And on here, I already marked them before, but I'm just going to make the holes a little bit bigger so I can see them better. Let's put it on this side as well. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my hole punch and I'm going to punch these holes. And that's what that's going to look like. With the rivets. Oops. Oh, I might have to, have to go to a larger size here. Just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a little bit of cement and cement these cement this down in, in place and then it'll allow me to punch the hole through while it's connected. Just a little bit though. And now what I'm going to do is just punch uh, through the bag body.
Okay. And this will attach on like this. So what I'm going to do now is set this rivet on this side. Rivet setter. Okay. And now I need to find a tool and then come back. So that was another tool I missed in inventory. Um, wire cutters or anything to cut the stem of the rivet. So I went ahead and cut the stems off and uh, I lightly peened this down using uh, both ends of this and this. It's best if you have a ball peen hammer. Uh, it does the nicest job on this, but I'm just gonna use this because this is what I have. So go ahead and do the other side. See that? Same thing. Make sure that your handle isn't twisted. It's facing, you know, the outside of the grain side is facing out. This is what happens when you rush your projects.
Okay, so it came out all right. Recovered. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, peen that down a little bit. Um, as you can see, we now have our straps on one side. So what you're gonna do is the same exact thing on the other side. To save battery in the camera, I'm going to do it off camera, but uh, I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. Measure my holes out on here, measure them out on the side of the bag, um, punch them through, set the rivets, peen them down, and then we'll come back and continue on. Okay, so I went ahead and attached the other side of the rivets. And now we have our handles. Let's see if I can get this in the shot. Have our handles on both sides. Great, so now it's time to stitch. So with this tote bag, you're going to be turning it inside out. So we have to stitch it face down. So inside out, face down. Uh, I like to do one side at a time so I don't glue down both sides at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up. This looks good. I grab a little bit of my cement, starting to solidify. I should have got a new, a new batch of this. But you don't want to use too much of this because what's going to happen is when you turn it inside out, the seam is going to pull. And if there's excess glue, um, it'll, you'll start to see the glue through the seam. So use this sparingly. You want it just to kind of hold it together for when you're marking your stitching and stitching. I left the lid off of this glue for way too long. Now it's all basically solid. It's not good. That's fine. You want to go ahead and line up your edges nice and straight.
Okay, so I'm gonna let that glue dry for a minute and then we're gonna come back and mark our stitch hole and punch through. Okay, so I gave that a minute or so to dry. So now I'm going to take my um, wing divider and mark a stitching line. I like to give it a not too like a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, like a solid eighth of an inch. Okay, I'm gonna take my stitching chisel and I like to. I'm going to be stitching over the top. I'm going to be looping it over the edge. Um, I think it holds it more securely, especially when you're turning it inside out, that top edge starts to come apart. So we're going to be looping over the top. So I'm going to put one prong over the edge and measure from there as my starting point. Okay. And then hand pressure all the way down just to mark where the hole will be. Okay, and I'm also gonna tie off at the bottom end here too. So now we have hand pressure all the way through. I'm gonna bring my slab. Um, I like to put just some spare leather, obviously on top of my punching surface here so I don't mess up my tool too much. Okay, went ahead and punched all the holes through. Now I'm gonna grab my thread and do four times the length. Something around there. Thread my needles. If 
Okay. Oops. So I'm not gonna film the whole stitching process on this, but I will start from the show the beginning and the end. So what I'm gonna do is start one, two, from the third hole down, go in. And then stitch, back stitch, all the way back. I'm trying to keep my head out of this, sorry. So I backstitched to the last hole. Now I'm going to go around the top, the top edge. So I'm just going to loop around and go back into the hole and then start my stitching. I don't know how easy that is to see on the camera right there, but you can see I looped around the top edge. So what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to stitch all the way down, do the same thing at the bottom here, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I went ahead and finished stitching that. I have the uh, tie off there, tie off at the bottom, back stitch two times. So now we have our first seam. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'll it's the same process, so I'm going to do it off camera to speed it up a little bit. Uh, you know, connect these two, glue it down a little bit, um, mark my stitching holes, punch my stitching holes through, stitch it, tie it off at both ends. At, then we'll come back and do the gossets. Okay, so finished stitching both sides. Now you can see our bags starting to come together here. All right, so the final step, or the second to last step, is to stitch the gossets. This is the hardest part of making a tote bag, uh, is doing the boxed, the box corners. Um, so I will try to explain it as well as I can. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is pulling the bag apart through the, these holes here, and then matching them up together to make um, a seam to stitch. And then we're gonna stitch across there. And then that will box off the corners. Um, I find it easier to use the hole punch. And then what I'm gonna do is punch a semicircle right into the corner here. I find it separates the leather a little easier Then you can make a nice um, even um, seam. So what I'm going to do is put that right in the corner there. Try to keep it even so that enough, you know, there's a same amount of circle on this side as there is on this side. Let's punch that through. Okay. And I'm going to do it on the other side. Okay, I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera there, but I punched a little semicircle into that corner on both sides. So now when you separate this, it kind of gives, it gives you a little bit more leeway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is try to get a little bit of glue in there um, they'll help hold it together while I'm stitching. This, this part's a lot easier to do when you're using a hand, when you're just using an awl, because you can kind of really um, mark it where you need it to. When you're using the chisels, it's a little tougher. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna scratch up 
the cut of the surface where it's going to be glued, just with my scratch all a little bit. This just helps the glue attach stronger. Okay. So I'm going to take some of my glue here. And wipe it along that inside seam. I picked a terrible day to leave the lid off of my rubber cement. Now it's starting to harden up. It's a real pain. Okay, this should be enough. So now what I'm going to do is you want to worry about centering, keeping the seam in the center as much as possible in this uh, area you don't want to glue it and then stitch the center uh, the seam off center so just try to line up looking at the other side and really give it a squeeze and pull those ends together and try to keep you know an even amount of material on both sides Don't be afraid to kind of manhandle it to really get it in place. Okay. So I have my clips down. My seam is glued there. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and then we're gonna come back and punch through with the stitching irons and sew it. Okay, so I let that sit for a minute. Get some of this stuff out of the way here. I'm going to thread my needles ahead of time because once you take those clips off, it's going to want to separate, so I like to be ready. So you, there's two different ways you can do this. You can stitch to the center piece and then stop and then stitch the other, you know, again to the, to the center. I like to go all the way across and I double loop it around the center seam for a really secure seam there. So I'm going to take the length of the whole way. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now I'm going to gently 
try to get this over to my punching platform without the seam coming apart or moving too much. Okay, so what I did there was just move the two end clips off to the end so I can access this but still hold it together. Okay. So I'm gonna move this one down here just to hold the other side while I work on this side. I'm gonna make my stitching line. Okay. And I'm gonna move these back over here. Stitching line. Okay, so now you're gonna mark your holes. I just go somewhere towards the end here. It's hard to see the camera, I guess. Somewhere towards the end. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. Marking with hand pressure. Okay, and once I get down to one side, put the clips back, move to the other side. Okay, so like I said, I go right to the center part, so I'm gonna go right up against right up against that seam and then start marking my holes again. So I marked everything with hand pressure. So now I'm gonna punch through this. So what I'm gonna do is punch up until the seam and then stitch it and then keep going just so this is holding, you know, this is held together while I get going down this way. Because our biggest concern is the seam coming apart. And that one I can leave. So now I'm going to stitch that down. I'm going to start in the third hole from the top, back stitch twice.
Okay, so now I'm at my last hole and I'll continue on punching the other one. Okay, and when I stitch over this, I do it a certain way. Um, I kind of double up on the saddle stitch. Ooh, I busted my hand. Oh well. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to stitch over the seam just normally, just like that. And then I'm gonna wrap it back around, kind of like I'm back stitching. Basically, I'm back stitching, so just stitching back through. Same thing with the other one. Okay, and then continue my stitch. So I'm basically doing like a triple back stitch almost. Okay, so I got to the last hole and I'm just going to back stitch like normal two times. Okay, and go ahead and you can trim your uh, thread off. And that is our first gosset seam done. So what I'm going to do is take a minute break here, get some water, and then come back and we'll do the second one. Okay, let's uh, do the other side and we will be done. Same process. We go ahead and pop a semicircle into the corner.
and then prop open the gosset. Put a little bit of glue on there. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to get my thread. So our thread is ready. Hopefully this is secure enough. Move my binder clip off to the ends. Mark my stitching line. I'm just going to mark my stitching holes while I have this side unclipped. Might as well. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go, because since I know I want to be butted up against the center seam, I'm just going to start from the center seam and go out. It doesn't matter how you do it though. Okay, I'm going to move my clips to the other side.
this side's a little tougher once the other side's already put together. It wants to like pull on it in weird directions. All right, I'm just gonna mark on the top end here. That's all my holes. This is being a pain, so I'm gonna kind of reset it. And like I said before, and the uh, other side, you know, don't be afraid to manhandle it and really, you know, pull the seam where you want it to be. It's going to want to separate in weird directions. So just hold it down and use your clips. They're incredible in this situation. All right, so stitch it up the same way as last time.
Okay, so I finished up stitching the other gosset. Uh, of course, my battery died, so I missed the whole thing, but it was the same process as the first one. Now we are at the point where our bag is together, but inside out. So depending on how thick and um, flexible your leather is, this part is either not too bad or really annoying. So what you're gonna do, hopefully this doesn't cut out, you're just gonna slowly work the leather and turn this inside out. I kind of just keep rolling it in circles until it starts to, you know, go with the flow. I'm going to do this until the battery cuts off again, and then I will show you the end result. All right, so I went ahead and finished turning everything inside out. You can see our finished tote bag. It's nice to um, really press on the seams from the inside. It just gives it a nice, more uh, compact look. So what I do is I kind of just go around each seam and just get a little squeeze. All right. Is the inside, outside. All right. Well, sorry for the uh, interruptions and sections that were a little rushed. I'm going to uh, definitely buy a cord to keep this thing running without the battery all the time. So the next videos will be uh, more consistent. But uh, if you have any questions on the template or on the finished product or the process, you can leave a comment below or you can contact me directly by email. Thanks for watching.